In this video, I'm starting fresh with a completely blank iPhone 16 Pro, removing absolutely everything, apps, customizations, and settings, to show you how I build a stress-free setup from the ground up. Rather than letting my phone become a constant source of distraction for myself, I've sat down for a few days and designed a system that works for me, prioritizing simplicity and purpose. We'll go step-by-step, -step, curating essential apps and pages for my iPhone, setting up focus modes to establish clear intentions, customizing the control center, and managing notifications to keep distractions at bay. And to wrap it up, I'll also share some extra tips and final tweaks that make my setup even more seamless and balanced. By the end, you'll have a complete roadmap for transforming your iPhone into a reliable, stress-free companion. First, let's lay down the foundational knowledge of focus modes, because without understanding this, you won't get the most out of this video, to be honest. So so think of focus modes as a feature designed to tailor your iPhone's layouts, notifications, and overall experience based on what you need in a given moment. Whether you're focusing on work, relaxing intentionally, or minimizing distractions during like a fitness workout, focus modes let you set rules that curate the apps, widgets, and notifications most relevant to that purpose in that moment. Essentially, each mode transforms your phone into a personalized setup, ensuring it's aligned with your intentions every time you unlock it. Okay, so with this understanding, we need to now define what focus modes we want for our iPhone. Some people like to do a personal focus and a work focus, a simple setup with the least amount of friction to create, to be honest. I have a focus for when I need to get stuff done, which is my work one, and then my phone becomes my phone for everything else, which is in my personal focus. However, for me, I found that by doing this, my phone was never truly optimized enough for specific scenarios I picked it up for, as personal focus ended up being a catch-all for just way too many intentions. So I decided for me, my focus modes are going to be sleep, driving, productivity, mindfulness, gaming, fitness, do not disturb, and if you are on iOS 18 and you have a newer iPhone, you may also see reduce interruptions there by default. That focus mode will intelligently allow important notifications to interrupt you and silence notifications determined not to be important. I'm not sure how Apple Intelligence is defining this, but I'd figure it has something to do with the language of the notification that you actually are receiving, if it has anything to suggest an emergency, a big problem, an urgent matter, like stuff like that. I personally keep this focus mode available as sometimes I don't have a specific intention with my phone at any point during the day, but I just, I know I want to be less distracted anyways. So this is an easy focus mode to lean into for those situations where I don't have a specific reason or intention for my phone at that time. I'll elaborate more on the technicalities of these focus modes when we get to that chapter, but we need to define what focus modes we want for ourselves so that we can take action with our next step, which is setting up and curating out apps and pages that we want for each of these modes. The first thing we want to do is remove all the stuff that we don't use. By deleting these apps, it will make your phone feel less frantic and cluttered and overall make this process easier to go through. Now that you've cleaned up everything, we want to make pages with different apps and widgets that we will later assign to each focus mode that we create. This is entirely personal, to be honest, but I know for me at least, I need a lot of inspiration to get started with stuff like this, so I'll show you what I did for each of the modes that I've created. So here's my sleep page. It's very simple, and you'll notice this a lot with my pages. I don't like to complicate things at all. I keep everything super simple, and you don't need to download anything to mimic what I'm doing. There's no third-party apps. There's none of that. You, Everything I'm teaching you today is all in-house that is already available to you on your phone. But anyways, I keep a journal app widget at the top to remind me to do a quick entry before bed, and below I have my balance app that I use as a guided meditation to help me sleep, and beside it is my preferred Bible app called Bible Project, which is self-explanatory. Here is my productivity page. I have an Opal widget at the top, which gives me a quick short cut to block all social media and distraction apps for a period of time to help me stay focused. And in the center, the four most useful apps to keep me productive, which is my calendar app, which I pay a premium subscription for at Fantastical, Spotify, as I love to play music when I'm filming my shots, Notion, as I run my business in there, and Gmail is just my preferred email client. Here is my mindfulness page. It's the exact same page as my sleep one. There is literally no difference as the context is the same, but in the back 
end, I did make some adjustments that we'll get into in the focus mode chapter. Here's my fitness page. I like to keep a fitness widget at the top, how much sleep I had the night before so that I have some data on how hard or easy I can work out today, a Strava counter for kilometers walked and ran for the week, and below a bunch of fitness related apps. So Strava, Spotify, True Coach, which is where I get my gym workouts for a coaching program that I signed up for, and Audible for audiobook listening. Here's my gaming page. I keep a YouTube widget at the top because I like to look up tips and tricks as needed when I'm playing a game. And below I keep Discord, PlayStation, Reddit, Philips Hue because I have a really cool setup with lights that I can control while I'm in game, settings, and messenger. My other focus modes, which include driving, do not disturb, and reduce interruptions. You can't create custom layouts for those. Actually, no, you can for do not disturb actually, but I, I don't make a custom layout for that. I prefer to keep all of this stuff just based on notifications. So these modes are just there to limit and control what stuff comes through to you. And it doesn't really care about your app layouts, widgets, stuff like that. It actually will just take on the default layout that's there, which for me is actually this one. I made a dedicated default layout. It's attached to no focus mode. And this is what my phone is gonna look like when I'm just using it without any clear intentions. So I have Google Maps and a weather widget. And below I have Spotify, journal app again, as I do like to keep encouraging myself to use it whenever possible. Messenger, ESPN, because I'm big on NBA fantasy right now. Set settings, and a folder for all of my banking and budgeting apps. I recommend you make your generic page or pages when you're not in a focus mode as catch all as possible with stuff that you generally go into a lot. If your phone is updated, you could also experiment with Siri suggestions where I think Apple is using Apple intelligence to figure out what your most used apps are, but I prefer to just set this up myself. Before we keep going, I wanna share something really cool. This is the Pataka X Aries collaborative luminous case for the iPhone 16. What makes it special is the Lumitex material, which glows in the dark after absorbing light, giving your your phone a truly unique and eye-catching look. Made from lightweight, durable airmid fiber, the case provides solid protection without adding bulk. Plus, it's fully compatible with MagSafe, snapping on easily with strong built-in magnets. I've been using the credit card edition, but if you're looking for other options made with this luminous material, they also have the Alien and the No Problemo style as well, which look equally as cool. Pataka also has other collections, such as their tactile woven cases, which are also lightweight, ultra-thin, and protective, but with unique designs to cater to a different kind of vibe for your phone. So whether you're after the glow of the luminous case or prefer something more understated, Pataka has you covered with cases that keep your iPhone protected, stylish, and functional. Trust me when I say this, these are the thinnest and sleekest cases I've ever seen for iPhone. You guys will not be disappointed. Click the link down below to purchase a case for yourself today. Okay, so now that we've made all of our pages, let's now go into settings and actually create the focus modes. You wanna to go to settings and then scroll down until you find focus. And here is where we will create all of our focus modes that we've been talking about this whole time. If you own multiple Apple devices, I would actually recommend you share these modes across all of them so that everything is just consistent with your experience. And then you wanna press the plus sign at the top and create each focus mode for yourself. You can name it exactly as you want and put whatever emoji you want and then you are brought to the focus mode screen where you can do all the customizations. This is highly dependent on your personal preferences but again I'm always someone that needs some inspiration so I imagine you might need some as well. So here's the general logic that I apply to the majority of my focus modes. To start if you own an iPhone with iOS 18 and you see this intelligence breakthrough and silencing feature I would turn it on for the majority of your focus modes. It allows emergency notifications to come through even if if you have it originally blocked, which is very useful and something you wanna keep on at all times. Really the only focus mode I have this disabled in is my mindfulness mode because I generally will only be in a mindfulness focus for about 10 to 15 minutes and I would just prefer to not be interrupted at all during that time. But in my sleep mode and everything else, I do have that feature enabled. That way, if there really are true emergencies happening, you can get through to me no matter what. Although some people would argue that what if there's an emergency during your mindfulness session, wouldn't you 
want to know that. Stuff to think about, maybe I will enable it, but for now I have it disabled. If you don't see this on your specific iPhone, that is totally okay. It just means you don't have the latest one with the latest features, but you can still get, you know, get really deep into this and customize this yourself with what notifications you allow from people and from apps. You can choose to silence notifications from, which means that it will allow all notifications to come through except XYZ apps and people or you can allow notifications from, which will silence all notifications from apps and people except the ABC ones that you allow. I prefer using allow, like this logic just works better for my brain, I think. And I will always allow all notifications to come through from my fiance and immediate family. That's it. They always go through no matter what. You can go into options in each focus mode and tinker with the settings here as well. I like to turn off showing silence notifications on lock screen, turn off hiding notification badges, silence notifications set to always, and depending on the focus mode, such as sleep and mindfulness mode, I'll turn on dim lock screen. Below is where you'll select the home screen page we created for each focus mode. Press choose, then select only the page or pages that apply to each of your focus modes. That way, when you do switch to that mode on your iPhone, it will transform the phone to that layout that you selected. You can also create custom lock screens for each focus mode, which is just super intense and complicated for my taste personally. It's a lot of effort to pull that off, so I just avoid doing that and I keep the same lock screen throughout each focus mode. You can schedule when these modes turn on automatically as well, which is really useful, like really think about this. It could be time-based, location-based, app-based, or you can also turn on something called smart activation, which then it will try to intelligently turn it on based on different signals like your location or app usage. Some examples for you to think about, I have mindfulness focus mode turn on automatically when I start a mindfulness session or open up my balanced meditation app. My driving mode will automatically turn on anytime I connect to a car Bluetooth system. Fitness will automatically start when I trigger a workout and so forth. It's a good idea to sit down and try to automate this as much as you can as the magic of these focus modes is when your phone transforms for you without you needing to do anything to make that happen. Below this, you can set up focus filters so you can customize how your apps and devices behave. For example, in mindfulness focus, I like to turn off my always on display, turn my phone to dark mode and turn on silent mode. This allows my phone to be less distracting in this focus mode. I recommend you optimize your filters intentionally with all of the focus modes that you've created. And just a friendly reminder, it's okay if some of your focus modes use none of the filters or they all use the same type of filters. It's totally fine. Like it, it's not a huge deal. Don't overthink this step. Just go with the flow. So once that's set up and you've done this for all of your focus modes, make sure you aren't actually in a focus mode right now. Then go back to the home screen, hold down and select edit, then click edit pages and deselect all the pages except your generic page or pages that you've made when you aren't using a focus mode. That way now, anytime you come out of a focus, you get this iPhone layout. Then when you select any of your focuses, your layouts will now change to that focus that you've set up in the back end. This is super cool. Like I'm gonna give you a moment to have a breather here. It's kind of surreal to see and experience this for the first time, just seeing your phone transform every time you select a different focus. That was sort of my experience and I think you might be having this the same one as well. I don't think I can go back to using my phone any other way now, now that I've spent a long time trying to set all this up. Okay, so now that we've taken care of focus modes, let's now look at our control center. I recommend starting with a blank slate here. So hold down, edit, and remove everything. Now it's important to think about the stuff that you always use all the time that you want access to just with the simple swipe down from the top. For me, I like to keep now playing at the top for quick media control. Below, I need access to my Wi-Fi and connection settings. And then I like a big shift Zam button because I always come across music I don't know and I want a fast way to figure out what it is. Below this, I have my focus mode selector, low power mode button, volume and brightness adjustment with screen recording, a silence button, orientation, flashlight, and Apple TV remote. You can design this however you want. Like you don't have to copy me. You can also size the control however you want as well. You could have multiple pages. Like the sky is the limit now with control center, but I personally prefer to keep things simple and have just one page 
with my absolute essentials. I just don't want to complicate anything here. A quick reminder though, for those who have made it this far, that anything you've set or created today while watching this video, it's not set in stone, guys. So you can always change it and fix it up as you learn about your phone usage over time. Like, don't overstress this, just go with the flow and evolve it as you are figuring stuff out. I know for me personally, when I tried setting all this up for myself, it took me a really long time because I was just overthinking everything and trying to make things absolutely perfect, but that's just the wrong way to go about it. Just, just make it as it goes and uh, just, you know, you know, adjust it when necessary. Now I wanna talk about how I handle notifications, especially with social media apps specifically. If you've noticed, I never had social media apps on my page layouts for any focus mode, as well as my generic page layout. Except for gaming focus, there was Reddit and YouTube on there, but that's required to be there because if I'm playing a hard game, I need to actually look up how to get past certain things or figure things out. So in that context, I think it's fine. But for everything else, this was all done on purpose. I just, I don't want social apps to be available to me right away so easily on my home screen. They will forever live in the app library where I have to go and search for it to use it every single time. Really for me, it's just an extra layer of friction that I like to add to prevent me from using these apps. The other layer of friction I like to do is turn off all notifications from all of my social media apps. This may or may not work for some of you. It works for me because then my phone isn't dinging and pulling me back into those apps all the time. I have to physically go check my notifications and DMs myself when it comes to mind. And to be honest, it comes to mind a lot. Like that's just how addictive these apps can be. But at the very least, you aren't being swarmed all the time with reasons to open them in your notifications on your lock screen. And I've actually found that over time, I would actually use these apps less because of these measures, which is really a win in my book. Okay, so if you made it to this point in the video, your phone is set up pretty well to work with you and not against you. But there are still some extra tips I have if you wanna make using your phone less distracting and more optimized. For starters, make use of the buttons available to you if you do have them. So on the new iPhone 16s, you have camera control. So I launch my camera app with it and you'll never find a camera app on my home screen or lock screen or control center. If you have an action button, customize that too. I have mine set to turn on reduce interruptions focus mode as I want a quick way to be less distracted when I don't have a particular focus mode I need to lean into during those times. Second, set up app limits and screen time limits with your phone settings as this is actually free to do to help you manage your time in distracting apps or you can you know, pay some money and use Opal, which is what I do and I love that app. I use it daily and you get so many options and customizations to ensure you have a more distraction-free phone experience. I've literally used my social apps way less because of this app. It's very well worth the money and no, they are not sponsoring this video. Lastly, this one is useful. I'd face ID lock any important app on your phone that you don't want some random person using your device to get immediate access to. So think banking apps, journals, budgeting apps, I just face ID lock, all that stuff. But there you have it. Like that's my go-to tips to set up a stress-free iPhone that doesn't work against you, but works for you and with you so that your experience is a positive one and not one that is you being sucked into distraction and all the negative stuff that comes with that. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Comment hashtag I made it if you finished the video and subscribe if you're brand new to my channel. But I'll talk to all of you guys in the next one. Peace.